Now, Traeger and Chilo are bootleg contraband, and they're here with us just now. Good afternoon, how are you both doing? Great! How's it going? <laughs> We're doing good. Traeger, have you been on before, but as a member of a different band? Uh, yes, as real, I believe we did an yes. uh, interview. Yeah, that's yeah. Uh, yeah, me and my that. partner Sarah, and she's here somewhere uh, uh. where I'm at right now. We're at a, we're at a little... Uh, Street in Asheville, North Carolina. Yeah, and that's a nice place. It's beautiful, you got gorgeous out there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> not my place, but uh, it is for the next week. <laughs> yeah, lucky you. Now, Bootleg Contraband are, of course, releasing your first ever album, which is quite remarkable to get my head around because you guys have been releasing music for well, I've known about you for over a year. So, what's prompted you to release your debut album now? When we first started making music, we just wanted to get the stuff out. We're like, just, yeah, single, single, single. Like, yeah, just, you know. And eventually we started to pile a catalog of unfinished works, like stuff that was like pushed to 75, 80%. Mm. And we realized that quite a few uh, tracks kind of, um, were worked well together. And, um, and, and it was about time. And I remember Chilo just being very uh, motivated and saying like, all right, like we need a album. And I was like, yeah, that's a great idea. Like let's break off all the material into two albums. Cause that is how much we had been sitting on uh, at the time. And so the first al- we called it album a and album B at the time. And now album a is the debut album. I O. Yeah. And, um, Album B uh, is called Mars Colony, and uh, that's to uh, that's coming up next. So, Ooh. will that be out soon, or will we have to wait a bit? Uh, that will be soon. Yeah, it'll be soon. I think this hopefully. year, without a doubt, I want to I want to have it uh, I want to have it loaded in the cannon within a month for wow. my personal goal. That's quick. that's my goal. But. That is quick. And you know the the, the great thing about um, working with Chilo is um, even though the album material had been we were paid patient with it but at the same time we were creating other things mm. and uh i really like the the uh, route that we took instead of just um instead of just creating the first album which we just released you know we created another album too and now that we did that you know it put me and chilo in a great position uh where the first album's out and the second one is almost done and i'm very very happy about that and why is the album called i o by the way we were digging uh, for ideas and uh, it, you know that was actually it was a name recommended from a friend who uh, had been side by side with me he's my videographer um, and he goes by Great Eye Films actually mm. does phenomenal work and did our music video Need a Beat sorry to go on a tangent but um, he he presented that uh, to me and I, I was like wow is that just such a fantastic simple name in and out mm. so I O is just a common thing in music production where which is signal flow in and out. Yeah. Um, so the idea we were coming up with different names and we wanted to come up with a name and then artwork that gelled together on their own as well as with the album. And the idea of IO and circuit boards just really, we felt like captured the visual image of the record. Yeah. And, and it, it flowed and and yeah, I mean, we loved it. And I also, uh, I, I don't mean to drop, but I also like mm-hmm. the duality of the name of the title, I.O., because um, it's, you know, it signifies two. So there's just two of us doing this. So yeah. I, I thought that was a good title. Yeah, I was thinking before we came on that it is a title that you would expect from an electronic band somehow, I suppose, because it's perhaps a technical name. It is. Now, full disclosure, um, you know, when you're coming up with the album name, you kind of research if there is anything called that. And yeah. uh, we saw that Peter Gabriel had an album in the works since 2009. But it, w- and so at first we were like, oh, nah, like, but he never released Peter released- Gabriel got to it first. <laughs> and, and then we were like, wait a minute, his is not done. <laughs> he never finished it. So, so we're like, let's beat him to it. <laughs> 
you know, and uh, not that it matters. I mean, mm. it, it, we're in 2022, so it's going to be so difficult to come up with words that just haven't been used. And yeah. I don't really mind because there's always a different context, a different picture, a different image, a different feeling that's going to come with it. Even if you do something that's been done before, like everything's been done. I mean, there's, yeah. you know, there's eight notes in the scale. I might be wrong with that. I might shouldn't have just blurted out a number, but you know, like yeah. music is one of those um things that i think is like gonna continue uh to grow and evolve even though there's all these limitations within notes and yeah. rhythms and i find it fascinating that it's kind of there's just still ways to be insanely unique with noise it's not a it's not about melody to me now it's about mm. rhythms noise and 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 everything kind of involved and and uh, yeah that's it, I, I you you would think it would be more like all right well when's the limit of music like everything's <laughs> been done or you know there's really no end now let's let Sheila speak a little bit more now what would you say are your favorite tracks on the album my my favorite tracks in the album are probably, I would have to say, Own Tito is one of my favorite tracks on there. Mm. It's, uh, it means untitled in German. And we had yeah. an issue with the distributor because initially we titled it Untitled and it was rejected quite a few times because they said it was such a simple term that it couldn't be used because something about SRO or mm. optimization or whatever. So I just decided the, the sound, the, the, the song had a very dramatic flavor and tone to it that I decided just to retitle it in German, Untitled, and it got <laughs> the distributors. I really like that song. It has a good flow and it has a really uh, it builds up really nicely as it goes along. Yeah. And I also so like you, the very last track on there. Um, it's our homage to Chicago. And uh, another favorite of mine, I think, would probably be... I'm not sure. I quite like all of them, really. And Traeger, would you agree with those conclusions? Yeah. Um, I don't know. What do I gravitate towards most in that record? Um, I, I don't know. I, I like them all kind of equally in their for their own ways, I guess, yeah. now that I think about it. Um, there's different attachments that I have to each of them. Uh, Radio Chilo is a, a dedication to Chilo. Oh, yeah. Like, I like that one, too. I forgot. <laughs> 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 I used to have a podcast in the for about 12 years in the 90s and into the 2000s um, and it was called Radio Chilo and it was pretty successful I had a big following a lot of subscribers to my monthly podcast and it was strictly house music for most of the time but uh, I decided to name that track Radio Chilo just to pay tribute to my yours is a podcaster wow how did you have a podcast in the 90s that must have been the first ever podcast right uh, well i think well maybe not in the 90s i think it started <laughs> in uh hold on it started in actually it wasn't the 90s at all it was two, started in 2001 now that i think about it. i get all my my <laughs> decades mixed up but yeah i started in 2001 and it ran through to like 2014 or something like that yeah, yeah. towards the last couple of years I was just uh, replaying old episodes. I was just done with playing other people's music and I really wanted to do, focus on making my own music, producing my own music. That's, I think that's a natural trajectory from a DJ to go ahead and, you know, because I DJed for so many years, to go ahead and just start making your own music. Yeah. And how would you describe the overall musical sound of the album? It's kind of what we'd expect from bootleg contraband, isn't it? That electronic sound. But for those that aren't familiar with you, how would you go about describing it well you know it is an electronic sound but there is a lot of uh or organic sounds in the record because we yeah. do use real live bass we do use real instruments along with the programming so it's a little bit of both but our next record but hopefully we'll be on to talk about that one has a bit of more of a harsher industrial sort of uh sound so it's, it'll, it's yeah. quite a, it'll be quite a departure from this one but this one here is more of a tribute to the chicago sound and what you know what i grew up listening to it's boot like contraband's version of that sort of genre but i think we have a sound that is distinct and um because we do use real instruments there is real instrumentation Kaysen is a brilliant uh bass player so he does the bass on there uh we use everything from my kids toys uh musical toys to percussion. sound yeah uh -huh. percussion yeah so you got the tiny tambourine behind you yeah it's right here <laughs> That was used so we many use times. Show, so many show them how big that is. Wow. It's tiny. Show, show them the tiny. That's Look at how small that is. That's <laughs> that tambourine was used so many times. I've got sleigh bells. 
<laughs> I love the pitch of that blue tambourine. It's real high. I have a real know. nice tambourine, but we go with this one because we do like yeah, it. But it, it sounds awesome. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, go back to the thing. It is, it is an electronic <laughs> sound from Bootleg Contraband, but it is. We, we will be incorporating more live instrumentation. If we ever do a proper live show, which we're going to be doing hopefully soon, mm. there will be some live music playing along with you know the electronic oh. stuff. I want to mm. say one more thing real quick. So Chilo, uh, can you grab those little hand percussion, those little congas behind you? <laughs> or uh, bongos, I should say. Sorry. These right here. So, so those. So for the track tribalism, there's an insanely heavy uh, hand percussion riff, and uh, I, the way we recorded it was so funny because we were sitting in the chair. I was like 15 feet away from the mic and just jamming on the hand percussion, <laughs> and I liked how it sounded um, with uh, it, the room. Like I could hear so much room in the recording, and mm. I was like, you know what like this might actually work for this song um so i really blew up the signal and saturated it and processed it really heavy and it, it did that all within the natural reverb of his room and it somehow worked and i i i don't know i kind of like to take things um uh i don't I, in in retrospect it's like yeah we could have had a professional hand percussion rig yeah mic'd up professionally you know um and i kind of like just taking a non-traditional route using whatever you have access to at the time even if it's just like small like bongos like that it worked yeah. and it's kind of fun to be it's fun to be experimental like that yeah i think it has something to do with the the sound in my room my studio has a cathedral ceiling <laughs> so the sound is, is things sound different here so mm. with this song tribalism and the percussion on it it really really made the track which is it's a very percussive track so yeah. it worked just really and here comes the rubbish question that you've probably been asked loads of times why have you called yourselves bootleg contraband okay well i can answer this uh, i'm a big fan we are i guess a, a big fan of honey dijon's she mm. is uh, a dj pr producer uh from chicago she's international now and i follow her on social media and one mm. day she also has her own private uh sort of clothing line with come de garçon um she posted something on social media about uh the children she calls her fans the children who were at one of her shows and they had, you know, uh, some of the garb that wasn't official. So she called it, the children were representing with illegal contraband. Yeah. So I just wrote that down. I thought it was a very nice uh, set of words. And later on that uh, turned into bootleg contraband. And I thought, yeah. it's a great name. That's what you shot that name out of nowhere in the dark. <laughs> and I remember just like... Yeah. Whoa, I always had it in the brain. back of my mind. Kind of, and, uh, kind of cool. And I, I can credit Honey Dijon for that. Mm. I credit Chilo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I credit Honey Dijon. But everybody has an influence somewhere along the line, you know. Yeah. I can't help but notice, Chilo, that behind you there, there is like a disc either silver gold or platinum or something yes. is that for one of your own songs or just a piece of memorabilia that is a platinum record from the smiths for their album the queen is dead oh why that album oh it's one of my favorite well they're one of my favorite band my favorite band of all time um so i just uh, when i came across it in auction i had to have it yeah one day it, it'll say it'll it'll say bootleg contraband on <laughs> yeah <laughs> now after your second album do you have plans for a third and a fourth and a fifth and a sixth we already started work on the third Ooh. we're always working we always work and and, and so yes we Kason just uh, sent me a track for possible inclusion in the third record we want to go with a little bit of a disco techie tinge so so yeah we, we're always working well past today's date or we're th we have things in in flow yeah well in the meantime where are all the places we can check out the latest album IO all over Everywhere. You can find uh, it on your favorite music source. Doesn't matter what it is. We're international. Um, yeah, just all the streaming platforms. Um, and did IO get up on Beatport and Track Source too? On Beatport, Track Source, Spotify, yeah. Amazon, YouTube, uh, Apple. Everything. I'm excited for the remix album that we're starting on it. Oh yeah, we're gonna uh, remix the whole album IO wow. with guest remixes. Yeah, we have a bunch of artists working on stuff right now, so I'm not gonna disclose who, um, because that's still that'll take a few months to finish. Um, but it's gonna be the hard. remixes are fun. Uh, I, mm. I 
I love remixing stuff. It's because all the sound sources for the most part um, are already created. Yeah. Whereas the original songs, they're, they're meant for the dance floor, but they're also kind of like telling a story. So I find that they're suitable for studio listening, like casual, like whenever you're just, you know, traveling or whatever that may be, or, you know, in the club. I wanted it to fit both, both scenarios. I mean, some of the songs are too long to play the entirety of in the club, but that's the point. The remix album is going to be really meant to hit the dance floor with. And, and we're hoping to get some big, big name DJs and producers to uh, tackle some of these tracks. And we've reached out to some. Some already have agreed. Some we're still waiting to hear back from. But it's going to be fire. It's going to be very yeah. good. Excellent. Well, many thanks for joining us today. It's been great to have you both here. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks for the. Oh, yeah. Thanks so much for having us. And we'll be uh, back. We really appreciate the opportunity. <laughs>